No, Bacon, uh, you also got it wrong. The only two that I want to beat up are Ditto and Brawn from Transformers. What did Ditto do to you? Except for Exist. <laughs> exist. Goddamn! And, and, and for saying, hey man, some people like that. <laughs> Oh, and please, I'm not the only one. GBR wants to do it all the time. <laughs> Ditto could just say hi to him, and GBR would say, what the fuck you say to me? <laughs> you say that like Ditto doesn't just every single opportunity he gets go, but you're wrong, though, and provide no explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Who would win in a fight? Ditto or GBR? Uh, GBR, that's not even a fight. It's a slaughter. <laughs> Yeah, GBR just wants to beat up Ditto the whole time. Yeah, I'd go on here and I go on here and say water is wet, and Ditto would be like, "Um, actually, it's dry." <laughs> <laughs> they have like an instinctual instinctive rivalry. is <laughs> dumb. Uh. And GBR would just want to beat him up. <laughs> he would say A and GBR would... <laughs> what the fucking <laughs> fuck? <laughs> be grief. Yeah, this guy's blue. Ditto comes in like, what if you're colorblind? Hey man, not everyone can see the color blue. <laughs> Peter Griffin, is that you? No, it's me, Ditto. <laughs> Gosh darn. Man, these first like five minutes are just Ditto roasting. Gosh darn. Hey Lois. Hey Lois, remember that time we got stuck in a KWCC? <laughs> That's real funny, hey guys, Lois. Are you recording this? I am. Of course you are. Yeah. He records oh, God, everything like, except when yeah, it's he's important. Like, he's like Rick. Oh yeah, I record everything. <laughs> everything now. How many people you think have been like t turned off by the fact that they turn on this podcast and they, they're almost immediately met, which is pure bullshit. <laughs> Also, Ka Kaiju X, I don't think Adam Wingard's going to answer your question. I think he's just going to say, sorry. Oh boy, hang on. Discord's crashing on me. Wee! Wee! Uh, yep, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Uh, hang on, hang on. Oh. Well, okay, I can't I'm find alive. it again. Bacon, I'm where alive. are you finding episode 5? Uh, I was on YouTube last night and some guy was watching it. Oh. Re reactions don't count. Your mom doesn't count. Well, I mean, yeah, she was bad at math, so... Not everything is... Not everyone's good at math like you are, Bacon. <laughs> I'm terrible at math. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but you're a vampire. Don't be Vampires are good at everything. <laughs> I am not a vampire. <laughs> you're pale. Your mom is pale. You're pale and you don't have mirrors in your house. I think that's just because he's poor. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, but, uh, I live in the ghetto. What are you on about? Wait, you seriously don't have mirrors? I don't. The the, the mirror is in the kit in the bathroom. That's like it. I don't have an actual mirror. Oh, that's still oh, a sure. mirror. Your yeah. mom's a mirror. <laughs> you said you don't own mirrors. Like your house just doesn't have any mirrors. That was yes. No, I, that was exactly what you said, Bacon. You lied to us. Uh, I did no such thing. You all just took it as an interpretation. I said I don't own a personal mirror. You, you didn't say mirror. personal. You just said it didn't specify personal mirror. You just yes. said mirror. You did oh, look, so we just going to you were a vampire. <laughs> and then I'm taking away Joe's HBO Max. Damn. <laughs> he doesn't need it anymore. You already watched the Godzilla movie. Damn. <laughs> I said bacon stop beating yourself in the mirror and you replied I don't own a mirror. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I know you're saying mirror, but all I hear is your mirror. Oh <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it seems like episode five's not up yet for me. Okay. 
I got spoiled by footage on accident, so yeah. that was a Well, nice. that's your fault. On accident. I, oh. I, went, I literally wrote it up YouTube and it was the first thing in my recommended. Jeez. And accidentally in giant quotation marks. Jeez. I, I will punch problem. you in the face, <laughs> Man, how do you guys have that problem? Do you guys, like, use your actual accounts to log in? Yes. Why? Because... I don't have an account. I don't, I don't use my YouTube account to, like, browse around. I just... I just tie into my YouTube account to comment on Guy Joyce's videos. Oh. That's it. No, here's what you do if you don't want to get spoiled. Just every time you exit out of YouTube, just clear your history. That way those stupid recommended videos don't show up. Uh, yeah. Attack on I mean, I don't care. I don't get Godzilla spoilers on mine. I don't know what Bacon's watching, but I don't get Godzilla spoilers. A lot of Godzilla things, that's what I'm watching. So it shows me. I haven't got money either. Yeah, see, I mean, I, every time I, I, got every time and I, I didn't even watch anything Godzilla related. I was watching like a Deadpool scene and it just Godzilla spoiler. See, every time I go, go onto YouTube after I clear the history, I just see the, the most obnoxious viral videos. That's why I don't clear my YouTube history because the YouTube's front page without those that stuff is AIDS. Or I just go on the search bar, type in let's say Godzilla, and then sh just click the YouTube button. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Rip in peace. Uh, fuck. Big brain yeah, moment for me. the same few videos for a week. Go <laughs> just watches his own channel. <laughs> <laughs> so... GPR, how does it feel that some people think characters from Battle from Earth is better than the versus King Ghidorah versus Mechagodzilla 2 and versus Destroy Us characters? They're they're wrong. They are <laughs> they're wrong. They're completely wrong. I swear to gosh, I what? know I, I said this that I was like it feels like they projected the manga's characters on there. Even that I can't I can't clarify whether or not the manga's like versions actually better. I just know they streamline a lot of shit. So it's like, you know, that in of itself is already sort of, like, inherently better. And Grey Shot will be I on in five like minutes. I feel like I'm missing something. So. Yeah, can, can anyone remember anything about a character from Bow from Earth, aside from Mickey being pointless? Uh, uh, I, I, they're remember, divorced. I remember the, I remember the Indiana Jones ripoff. Yes, Indiana Jones ripoff they ripped and, off his Indiana wife, Jones. and his wife. Yeah, yeah ex-wife. Ex-wife, yeah. yeah. That's about the divorce only... child is sad. Right. It is a characteristic I remember, not an actual character I remember, if that makes sense. I only remember because I watched the movie recently and had to, like, implant it into my brain to write the bio from Mothra. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, fuck, I have to watch Space Godzilla for the bios. <laughs> yeah. Damn. GVR be like pain, suffering even. Agony, if you feel so inclined. <laughs> Fuck. Hell. At least so you get to watch right after that. Okay. Uh, Joe, speak. Say what you're gonna say. Hey. No, no, no. It's... No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Joe speaks, one of us banishes him. Goddamn! I'm gonna shoot up the. I'm gonna shoot up the KDCC today. Noise. Damn. You got back up. Don't worry. But, but Joe, to tomorrow's up. Mortal Combat. Oh shit! Wait, that's yeah. tomorrow. That just. That just yeah, means yeah. I could perform a fatality today. <laughs> yeah, he needs to practice getting his fatality down right. So, so let me get this straight. Joe is going to destroy the KWCC single-handedly with Nagoda by his side. Uh, after that's not single-handedly. That is not single-handedly. Single I know, I made... I, re yourself. I, re I realize... I realize... I realized that mistake halfway through. <laughs> I was like, wait, that's not single-handedly, you moron. 
stuck in the first Mortal Kombat movie where they go flawless victory when Wu Kang clearly got hit. <laughs> yeah. I'll volunteer my services for the mass shooting to be the pack meal for Joe and Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm picturing is Alex carrying like 20 guns and he's like struggling to stand. <laughs> <laughs> The rest of us freaking get shot to death and die. <laughs> they get to me, they put the gun to my head, it's just like, just do it, and now it's just like, whoa. Whoa, man. Whoa, man. Whoa. And it secretly Ditto's the one that uh, leads the retaliation front, and it's just him. <laughs> hey, man, you can't shoot up the whole form. Some people like that place. <laughs> Big blast <laughs> no, Do Gino. you remember when I went back in time? No, I didn't, because Jane Adams was a dumbass. <laughs> no, G after yeah. after Ditto says that, GBR is just gonna snatch the gun from Joe and go and just shoot Ditto himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking you with me, you son of a bitch. This is oh, for requesting man. Hellhawks in the KWC. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I hate that you guys had that long ass conversation while I was gone. <laughs> and I'm just bombarded with 200 messages. <laughs> I was so gone too, I had the same thing. <laughs> I love when you just came in, like, why do you guys always do this while I'm walking? <laughs> so, so j just to be clear, I'm assuming the war. I'm, I'm assuming the only way the war, war bats would get added is if it was more of the concept art, right? Yeah. We're adding the war bats to the KWCE. I mean, I was yeah. talking like regular KWC. Yeah, yeah, no, Grace, I basically said like, if we were to do that, it would basically need to be like the scrapped monster Nozuki based off the concept art of the male, which like walks on its yeah. wing claws and has an electric stinger. Right. I would personally just take the uh, KWCE approach, where it's just like, it's the Warbat, but then you have Nozuki in there, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, like, because the, there was some brief discussion, like, me and Harley had, like, nothing suggests Nozuki is bigger than the Warbats. Yeah. Right, like, it's I, just a male and female dichotomy. Yeah, yeah, it, it's sexual dimorphism. I mean, it's like, it's just... Yeah, like... Yeah. Yeah. Because Grace and I was talking like it was Nozuki was like a super gauser Ramorok, like bigger, badder. Yeah. Like, no, it's just the same, but slightly different. Right. Same size. That's what I saw too as like the same size creature, just built differently. Yeah. And I saw Harley got super angry. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand why you would get angry over that. I understand, like, we're not wanting to push for, like, insignificant monsters, but I think, like, like the war, even the regular war bats were like, eh, they're alright. Yeah, they're competent. I think part of it is the <laughs> fact that, like, the in the KWCE, like, staff meeting thing, like, we had all agreed, like, no war bats. Mm. And Harley mm. said the war bats didn't put up a fight. <laughs> Even they just so strangled Khan and Joe and Joe said that's fighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I think part of the issue is just, like, the Kong. fact that I was that's fucking fighting. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's fighting. That is called fighting. That's engaging in combat, which is fighting. Right. The the war bats were given a chance like, to retaliate. If they were just Kong beat them down with no mercy, then I would see the point otherwise. Like it's yeah. it's basically the same it's basically the same thing that happened in King Kong vs. Godzilla with Odako. Yeah. Actually yeah, that's a brilliant point. <laughs> well, because it's like the concept are like we hyped it up as like, oh this changes everything, and it was like it is just like us electric stinger and wing walking. Yeah. Like what won Harley over was me <laughs> revealing the venomous wings thing. <laughs> Look in cinematic universe. Oh jeez. <laughs> Damn. Satan like Satan would be like big fan by the way. 
do you remember when you were with your first girlfriend and you came as soon as she touched your leg? It was me, Barry. <laughs> oh, God. Have, have you done one with Kaiju X on his racism yet? Uh, I, I did. I, hold on, let, let me... <laughs> yeah, no, like, it wasn't even the concept art that, like, won Harley over. It was even mentioning, oh, yeah, they have venomous wings. Like, they're not purely playing... It's not purely a flying snake, it's a poisonous flying snake. Yeah. It's like, oh, <laughs> just a little more. Just a little more. Oh, I, I found the Kaiju X one. Oh, boy. <laughs> Do you remember when Baggin was cut out of almost everything? It was me, Andrew. I went back in time and reduced Baggin to a video game monster so your defenses would be lowered. So low that I could kill Grayshon. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> Oh, uh, good grief. They can read, read the ones for all of us. <laughs> and Kaiju X can show them. Gosh darn it. You're forcing me to edit? Alright, uh, I'll just have the image of... It was me, that guy. I don't know. The reverse Flash. <laughs> it's Reverse Flash. Reverse Flash. I was about to call him Anti-Flash, but I was like, you know what, close him. <laughs> Do you remember when people said Monster X was a weak, stupid, poor, excuse of a Ghidorah poopy head? It was me, Matthew. I brought the <laughs> brains in our hot takes can make you so angry that you were distracted. Distracted enough to take over the KWC. <laughs> I love how the one for me and for Gaiju X is like a huge political play, but for Ditto, it's just delete your Pokemon save file. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember bad. how Benny Lars episode was in the Crip Show movie that Toho distributed? It was me, Alec. <laughs> oh no. Bacon, you died. He died. Wow, he died someone assassinated him during mid-speech. <laughs> Do I have any more? I do, think. <laughs> do you remember when you were not allowed to speak bacon? It was me. <laughs> I went back in time, so I made sure he wouldn't be able to fucking talk. <laughs> oh, the next person I'm doing it is soul. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, good uh, uh, a great shot. Welcome. Greetings. How do I sound? Oh, yeah. You sound good. fine, good. man. You sound fine. We were recording the last 20 minutes waiting for you. I, I greatly apologize. There was a... I'm moving soon, and there sadly, one of the houses we were looking at fell through. So it was a, a whole bunch of calling and that kind of stuff. Damn. Make a damp. Understandable. Indeed. I had not planned it either. We literally got the email at two and I was like, oh no. <laughs> so it was just like panic calling all around. But yes, I am here ready for the KWCC and all that it entails. <laughs> oh, Alright. <laughs> oh boy. Well, alright. <clears throat> Let's properly begin this bad boy. Hello everyone and welcome again to this month's KWCC. I am your host Kaiju X and with me today I have Big Shrimp known as Joe, Grayshot151, GVR, John Wayne known as Alex, Nagoda, and Wog as Bacon. Uh, and today we will be going over the first match in the lineup, finally resuming those classic KWC lineups of whatever we do. Uh, match 329, the conclusion of the King Kong month, technically. Uh, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, Godzilla Legendary versus King Kong Showa. Written, uh, the both written and the banner by Matthew Freese. So, uh, in this case, I'll really go, like, you know, I guess... <clears throat> Actually, you know what, fudge it, I'm gonna go first. I really like... Yeah, I know. Really like this match, I think there was Why? a fun... <laughs> Why do you base boost? <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> you was so hard not to laugh like when a... I heard that. <laughs> Edgewax out here sounding like a YouTube poop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no. Godzilla Legendary versus King Kong Showa. I really enjoyed this match. This was a very fun match to read through. It was a fun match to, you know, just sort of, like, you know. Again, verification process when I read it there. I had a blast reading it. The dynamic fighting between Kong and Godzilla was a lot of fun. And uh, I kind of enjoyed the, like, even if it's a little, like, on the nose, I enjoyed the satirical element to this. I don't think we get enough matches that have some kind of satire be it at the fan base or other, or even just satire in general. It is really nice to see that here. Uh, I, I know this match was a little different before, and I do remember telling you, it's like, hey, uh, change change these elements around. It's like, oh. You didn't tell me anything. I'll get to that when it gets to me. Okay, you know what? Yeah, no. Uh, you'll, you remember what happened better than I did, all right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> this match got changed, but it wasn't because of any feedback I received. Right, right. Okay, yeah, no, I can't, I cannot remember what happened. Apparently, I can't remember things anymore. <laughs> You're, you're not taking your meds. I'm calling the nurse. <laughs> no, not again. Anyway, uh, but uh, no, this is a very. Uh, I like the way this is staged. I like the brutal fighting that goes on between the two. And yeah, no, again, a lot of nice bit of fun, like satirizing of the fan base through the Vortok. That was fun. I do re uh, enjoy that. I, yeah, I enjoyed that quite a bit. I also like the banner for its simplicity. It's like, hey, how do you incorporate Vortok? <laughs> how do you incorporate the Vortok stuff? It's like, and I think you did a good job as sort of like a uh, display of the characters, if you will. It's like, oh, okay, this is like legendary Godzilla and, you know, Sholo Kong. It's like, ah, oh, that's a really cool, really cool idea. And it, I think it was also low-key, this banner... That inspired a little update that came along with Match 330, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, but yeah, no, really good match all around, and, uh, and yeah, no, really enjoyed it. So I look forward to rereading it either in the future or when we eventually get to the Committee Reads version of this. <laughs> uh, you mean in the year 2055? Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. Really good match, man. Good job, uh, and great banner, fun banner. I like or well, as fun as as fun as it's uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, as fun as it can be. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk about the banner like very briefly when it gets to me, and I'll go like after everyone else has oh, gone. Okay, so like you know. All right, so uh, Joe, what'd you think of the match? Wait, I don't uh... get to go second anymore. What is this? <laughs> I'm going top to Correct. bottom. Cut. Okay, Dick understandable. Cut <laughs> uh, I like the banner. Uh, the banner looks the banner looks really good. Uh, Thank I you. It, but I like the idea of it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I like the idea of satirizing the, the fan base. Gosh, Jerry. Uh, and GVR usually writes really good matches, so I expect this one to be really good. All right, cool. Read Thank it, you. Read it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll speed read it. <laughs> speed run. <laughs> All right. Uh, Gray shot. Now you can go since you were since. Oh yes, because that was truly worth the wait. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no, no. Just, just, <laughs> probably could. No, uh, jokes aside, I guess I'll start with the banner. This was the finale for King Kong Showa's uh, month. And I think there's no better opponent than Godzilla Legendary. The banner itself, I like the description, you know, advanced mind, you know, quote, you know, like some nice touches to the original. Uh, again, it, it reminds me a lot of the banner I made for Bagan versus Team Exilians, basically. In regards to you have, you know, the, the two, all the monsters up front, you know, it's unrelated, it's not really realistic to size, and you have space and, like, a ship in the background. Uh, I, uh, the fact that the monster, again, Kong is an older image, so you have, that, it, uh, 
the, most of the Kong's images are granulated. I thought it worked well. Like call, like Godzilla, the ship, everything kind of like fits together. So yeah, I, I like the banner. Uh, as for the match, I, I thought it was really good. Um, I my biggest complaint is I didn't like yeah minus the I think the opening set piece with the Vortok. I think the Vortok were the most interesting aspect of this match. The rest of it kind of blended together. Like yeah, you uh, the you know the death and destruction you know of the people uh, excluding that. Uh, mostly just the interactions of the Vortok when I'm speaking to like the the Queen and such. Um, yeah, I, I I'd I'd say a, like a six out of ten. It was very engaging. I also kind of. This is kind of a thing, but anytime you have very two monsters like this in a battle, uh, it's always nice to have a definitive winner. And while I understand why that was the case, I, you know, it was by the end, I was kind of like, oh, why, uh, you know, <laughs> I kind of wish there had been a more definitive winner. Um, but a draw is fine, and that's uh, that's not really a negative, more so just a personal thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, overall, I, I, a good end to the Kong month and. Yeah, a fitting one of that. And I'm excited to see if you do make a sequel to this, where it goes. Yeah. Well, the table. definitive winner a day later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's not off the table. It's not really, like, in mind at the moment, but it's not, like, off the table or anything. We'll see where the future, what the future holds. Yeah, it's next match is Pong Legendary fighting the two. <laughs> I mean, that wouldn't be that bad. <laughs> Actually, no, it's Kong, it's Kong Legendary and Godzilla Showa. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That'd be fun. Sunday's Godzilla versus Kong Legendary. I mean, if Godzilla That's was to ally with it, if Kong was good to ally with any Godzilla, it'd be Showa. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. probably. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So I guess GVR, whoop, or no, uh, no, uh, no uh, John Wayne, what were your thoughts? Yeah. I thought GVR was going next. No, he's um, going, no, going after everyone else. Okay. Yeah, I have to agree. I really like this match. I love the premise. Again, the Vortex were probably the most entertaining part with them reacting to the fight. Again, basically having them act as the Phantom, just like saying, we want to see them fight, not stand around, man. <laughs> and yeah, I do like that there has Godzilla and Kong's hesitant to fight each other. Like, they're just standing there staring at each other until they're basically shocked into fighting. And, and of course, the fight's really brutal. Wow. I, again, really good stuff. Like, god dang. And then, and again, this, or kind of where I disagree with Greyshaw, I kind of like, the, I kind of like uh, them drawing, because they both make for great vessels for their invasion. And yeah, I think if, it, in, in this case, I think it felt right to have a draw. But again, I think either one of them winning could have been fine as well. But yeah, just, I will explain why I, why I made it a draw when it gets to me. <laughs> but yeah, I think, um, uh, I want to say in terms of this Kong month, I think ha had it not been for the abrupt ending in Harley's match, Hers would have been my favorite of the month because, again, I think that one had the most original and unique idea of Kong overdosing on lightning, turning him into like this feral, crazy state. But again, had the ending not been abrupt, that would have been my favorite, but this is my favorite of Thank the you. Kong month. Because, because Harley made one mistake, and now I'm expecting Bacon to make a reverse flash meme of that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for our material. Thanks. <laughs> Harley was this close, but you took it took it from her. But yeah, great <laughs> stuff, man. Great stuff as always. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, Nakoda, your turn. Yeah. Oh, my turn? Yeah, your okay, turn. Okay, so... I like... I like how they are. You had them 
basically kidnapped and forced to fight in the arena to see who's the stronger of the two. Plus, like, that whole, like, beginning segment, like, Kong is a thinking animal, one atomic breath, better reach, Kong's gonna get torn apart, that type of thing. That's fun, because it's basically just every Godzilla fan out there <laughs> and King Kong fan out there arguing with each other. I also like how, like, while Godzilla was just, was just like, attack, 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 Kong actually had to think of stuff like, oh, look, a barrier, let's use that. Plus the banner is pretty neat, like the, like both of them just there with their stats of, like, uh, right on them. Plus like the background is like the spaceship they're fighting on. Uh, also I like, uh, I like the use of the, I, I, what are the aliens called again? Vortok. Vortok. The, the Vort, yeah, those, those guys, those people, those aliens. Because no, they aren't really used, like they're used a couple times, but they aren't really used much by anyone else. It's like it's usually mostly just Exilian. Yeah, which is weird because you'd think they'd be used more considering how they're like the main villain of the Atari trilogy, which I know. I'm pretty, sure, pretty sure most of the people who write for the KWC adore. Yeah, so it's a little, it's a little weird that it's just like, eh. <clears throat> Oh, also, Godzilla would have kicked Kong's butt, says one of the comments. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so, Bacon, your turn. <laughs> Monkey. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, homie only makes fire. There's nothing wrong at all because homie makes only pure fire. God, how dare you guys even criticize a single thing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I forgot to put his volume down again. <laughs> Rip Nagoda. He got flashbang. Uh, oh, yeah, overall, I, I found it quite enjoyable. Um, that, that is a weird point. Not like... Barely anyone uses the Vortac. That, that is or like a bit any weird. other aliens. It, it has to be the Exilians. Millennium Exilians, to be exact. Ah, the goth hot topic ones. <laughs> uh, I really like the banner, and it. I think afterwards I puffed up my Wii and I started playing Destroy All Monsters Melee because it made me mis nostalgic. Nice. Uh, oh. The fight itself was very brutal. I liked that it was on the alien ship. That's pretty cool. Um, I like that it was a draw. Like, they just they beat each other to hell. And it, it was a really enjoyable match. Um... If I were to say my favorite in Kong Month, um, hold, hold on, if it will load so that I can remember the fucking ones that happened this month, uh, yeah, okay, it's, uh, my, my favorite is either this or the next match. Good stuff, though. You, you, you did good with this. Thank you. And then Birdman, Birdman comes in immediately. <laughs> <All right. clears throat> Hello, Birdman. Uh, Bacon, did you have anything else to add on there? Or? Uh, you you made it so that Funny Monkey didn't have anything added to his lose score, and that's a W. <laughs> <laughs> At this rate, Kong Shoal Kong's just gonna have all draws after many rounds of many losses. Damn. You know, with Kong Legendary's inclusion, I'm going to be amazed if Shaw ever gets another win. <laughs> oh, damn. That's sad. That's depressing. No wonder he's an alcoholic. <laughs> if you, the viewers, ever make King Kong Shaw lose a match, I'll, I'll be at your door and I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. 
<laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> but yeah, freaking, uh... Yeah, no, Birdman. Uh, what did you think of match 329? He is currently typing. I guess he's just gonna have to type it out, and I guess I'm just gonna have to read it. I guess. Had you actually kind of disgusted by the idea of reading? <laughs> <laughs> I'm what a, is he, Joe? I'm Man, a, that, remind, that reminds me of the moment from the Attack on Titan Part 1 where Mikasa sneezes and Aaron gives her his scarf like he's annoyed at her or something. <laughs> Why are you sneezing, dumbass? Monkey see, monkey do. Monkey shit and monkey poo. <laughs> <laughs> like Pong show him before he throws his shit at Angiris. Alright. <laughs> for, for anyone that is curious, Birdman's British, so that is, that, it seems to be his, uh, it's, it's not translating to his review. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but seriously, he's diving into his actual thoughts this time. <laughs> It was an average match, in my opinion, says Birdman. GVR about to throw hands. <laughs> GVR, you didn't put any Ultra Monsters in there. Of course he's not going to like it. <laughs> you're right. Take Damn, less. you're right. <laughs> GVR, your state of the queen is average. Yeah. Papa, can we go to the theater and watch an Ultra Man? <laughs> Take <What>? less. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we're laughing like Mad Men and the audience is like, what the fuck are they laughing at? GVR said Britain is an average country in my opinion. The premise was neat, but was missing too much in regards to the story to make it actually interesting. Which is, ah. Damn. I'm, I'm gonna be amazed if Ditto jumps in here real quick and says, Haha, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> much like Britain. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Green shot roasting. Green shot throwing shade. <laughs> Me and his drink class, just much like Britain. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, no, no. Britain is uh, one of the cornerstone foundations <laughs> of the world. <laughs> but it is, but its food is bland. Moving on. Damn, Bacon, you gotta defend your homie. GBR is like your Birdman. best friend or something. Birdman just made note, I will crap in your mouth, and I just want to make note, I do not want British food, so no thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your offer, but I will turn down. Uh, I assume you're talking about clam chowder. I, I, I hear that's a very British thing. <laughs> I hear it's a very British thing, he said. Uh, good grief. <laughs> good question, Birdman. Do, do people piss you off when they say fish and chips and they hand you potato chips? No. Damn. Uh -huh. I don't see why not. Uh, what about what if it was potato chips and goldfish? <laughs> <laughs> Dad, that's not a meal. That's a that's a white snack. That's that's the American version. <laughs> God, so why are we such assholes? He literally was just like <laughs> he said his opinion, and everyone just shit on Birdman. It's funny. <laughs> Uh, <sighs> good grief. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, forget, uh... But, uh, yeah, no. Alright, but yeah, no, he just finds it to be more of an average match, and it's just like, eh, it didn't do... To him, it didn't do enough to, I guess, pull off what, you know, I guess what it intended to do, or whatever. Okay, yeah, me, my turn. Okay. Yeah, for starters, the banner, I just went on YouTube, found the opening cutscene of Godzilla Unleashed, that of the Vortex, of the alien faction. I just took a screenshot of the best picture of the ship. I did have to do some messing around with, like, noise filters 
for it and more importantly the legendary Godzilla PNG just because the only Kong image that would work was that crusty JPEG <laughs> Dang. yeah I, I, I made it work I think I made it work oh yeah I think so yeah it definitely did work yeah as for the actual match itself uh, I mean for starters I don't think it's my best work by any means like I def- it, I wrote this I wrote the actual match like two or three years ago. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So like, I definitely reading it over again. I definitely see like a lot of places I would improve on it. I would have like more of a story. Probably double down on making fun of the fan base. <laughs> yeah, and no, I think the match is fine as is. Uh. Yeah, this was originally based off of a request on the forums, which was basically like the two being kidnapped by two different alien races to like settle a war between them. And that was originally what I wrote. And that was originally what I wrote with like original alien species like these monkey like aliens taking Kong and these lizard like aliens taking Godzilla. And then going to a third alien race's planet where they had like this big arena and putting them in there to fight. And I wrote that whole thing out, submitted it, didn't get any feedback from a verifier or anything, and then found out like two years later, while Kaijuix was replying to someone else's question on the writer assistance thread, that you can't have original species in the KWC. Oh. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I I that, that is actually one of the rules I did not know of for a long time, so... Uh, I think, to be uh, fair, I didn't know the rule to that either until I... I think I had asked Grayshot about that, I think. Wait, do, do uh, my like, hybrid ideas count towards that? Oh, gosh. I mean, uh, that's a uh, good difference. You're fine, but... Oh, okay, you're fine. Good. But the thing is, right, like, if... Just like with human characters, the main note is, like, if we have an alien, uh, like... If we have an alien civilization, use them... Before you use something else, yeah, yeah. Unless you're doing like something like super minor, where it's like uh, just a like it's it's a one and done situation, like you know, uh, or, or or you know a nod or something, maybe. But that would be as far as you could probably go with it. Right. So, like we don't want like an alien civilization invading Earth that's not from the Toho Library. Right. Yeah. You can mention like, oh, custom alien race A was conquered by the Vortok and was made their slaves or something. I don't know. Yeah, like if someone wrote a, like a KWC match, right, where it said like the Vortok, it's like, oh yes, we've we've killed plenty of, uh, uh, plenty of alien species, but the you know, and the worst ones were those split jawed reptiles or something. Okay, you know, if you want to give into de- more detail than that a little bit, I'm okay with that. But it's like the group that steals Godzilla and Kong, we've got plenty f- to pull from, and I think you yeah. did well with the uh, the Vortok. Yeah, no, like I was going to say, uh, when I saw that, I immediately went back and rewrote the match to change it to the Vortok, just because, like, those that it's an alien species that can easily take away monsters and has an arena. Right. You know, Joe and I are going to perform a hostile takeover just to add the Quintessons into the KWC. <laughs> Gosh darn it. But anyway, yeah, in the original version of the match, it was in like a coliseum, like this huge walled coliseum with sand on uh, as the floor where they were fighting on and these big metal walls. And then there was still like an energy barrier above the walls. And the way the climax of the fight basically went was when Godzilla did his atomic ray, it glassed the sand beneath Kong. And then Godzilla stomped Kong through the glass sand and the metal floor, where Kong proceeded to grab a generator from underneath the arena and throw it at Godzilla, which disabled the shields. And then there would have been a brief fight, like, in the stands as people are running away and they're trampling over them. Before Kong ultimately grabs, like, a Jumbotron off the side of the thing and slams it over Godzilla's head Uh instead of the big building. Oh, right. Uh, my apologies if you guys heard that. There, are, there are, Apparently today of all days they decided to do test flights because I also live near an Air Force base. Or like a Damn. military base. Or like, uh. And unfortunately, even if I muted myself on Discord, 
Uh, that's not going to do much because it's picking up, the recording thing's picking up my voice directly. So it's going to pick up whatever sound around it. So, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. And the original version of the ending after the two knock each other out would have been like the representatives of the different other two warring alien races being like, wait, who wins? Why are we even fighting? I don't remember. <laughs> and then the third alien race representative just like chasing that with a gun <laughs> before deciding to auction the two off. Oh, just like real politics. <laughs> Basically. Why are we fighting again? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. The reason that this ends in a draw is just, like, to continue with the whole, like, poking fun at the fan base and at the idea of Godzilla vs. Kong. Because, well, it's a draw. You know, what so many people didn't want. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's the only real reason it's a draw is just because it's like wanted to have it so like it continues the whole like satire thing of like of course it's a fight between two pop culture icons. We can't have a definitive winner draw. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And also, also, what you may notice is the fact that Kong doesn't absorb any electricity in this match. Damn. Well, I did that because this was around the time like people, so many people were complaining like, oh, every show a Kong match, he gets struck with lightning out of nowhere and wins. People <laughs> always complain about that. So Damn. I just decided to, so I decided to make a match where he is able to hold his own without any electricity whatsoever. Yeah, I know. I had just now noticed that that's like, it, like his power set's just listed as like radiation resistance, King Kong escapes, and advanced mind. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. He never used lightning in this match. And you know what? Good change of pace. I like that. Yeah. And think of any other Kong that doesn't use lightning. So original. <laughs> I'm speaking I'm relative to this one, all right? Yeah, I like how in the day we were just like, oh, Kong using electricity again, and now everyone's going to be like, you know, I guess we can have Kong use electricity because that's his unique thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, the, I just remember, like, I think that when I wrote, wrote written this, like the committee reads for like for a Kong match had recently come out, and like there were like at least one or two comments of like oh, every match with Showa Kong has him just get struck by lightning out of nowhere and win. So like I'm gonna do something different because this is young JVR who's obsessed with being different but also copying things at the same time. Yeah. I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Sucker should have learned your lesson. <laughs> Deep play. Anyway, that's all I have to really say. Alright. Glad people like it. I think it's fine. Definitely not... Definitely one of my lesser matches, but still pretty good. Uh, compared to what's to come, technically. Uh, <clears throat> anyway... Oh, uh, <laughs> but when I say less, it's just like it's an older match, an older match, and I've def I've improved. Yes, no, I totally get that, man. Uh, yeah, no, I do, I do remember this like one of the older ones I got a couple of years ago. Just took a hot minute to get around to, and by the time I had more incentive to look it over once Gray Shot had planned for the King Kong month, I was like, okay, <laughs> uh, I was like, yeah, you know, check everything, custom creations. What's that? <laughs> But yeah, uh... Yeah, no, like I said, there, I didn't get any feedback from the verifier. I'm pretty sure I sent it to Alex. Right. Which, I mean, I'm, again, we... I, I could have sworn I... I right. then, then again, that was like years ago. I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, because what I do remember is I submitted this the first time. Yeah, the second time I submitted this after I had fixed it with the Vortex, it was like to Alex, and it was... Alex, it, the verifiers were Alex and Harley, but the first time I submitted this, there were three verifiers. It was Alex, 
Spanish Bulldog 63 and Dino Master. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Jeez. And what I have learned since then is that I'm 90% sure Alex was the only one that where my matches actually got through. Yep. <laughs> yeah. This is why we have the Excel system that we've, been, you know, <laughs> that we that we have today that we that we totally just yeah. didn't make up last year. <laughs> Yeah, even but, even then, I was kind of like I was always the primary one. Transparency is always a a, a key ish, a key thing, and now we have total transparency on what people get, and you know when people get it, you know all that kind of stuff. So now we won't have that issue going forward. Yes. Apologies that you had to deal with that GVR, but and and everyone yeah. else who had to deal with it. <laughs> Just GBR. Come on, we don't like and, those other people. And he asked if, 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 and if I don't reply, like, if I don't reply to s accepting your matches, uh, or don't reply about seeing if your matches got accepted or not, just ask me. But most of the time, if you don't get a reply, that means it actually got through. Yeah. We only re have to reply if it doesn't go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. I remember that was one of the things I had enforced that was like, uh, yeah, like, respond it's basically no news is good news as far as you're concerned yeah but again, but again if you want to reply just ask me <laughs> yeah wish i had the same response to my new house yeah. <laughs> uh... what a bummer i wish i had the same response oh, to my job i guess the real realtor verifier forgot to message you <laughs> oh, they did. They did message me, which is why I knew it was bad news. Uh, <laughs> I'll be right back. You don't meet the standards of our reality. <laughs> Damn. But yeah. And then leaving off with one last comment from Birdman. How dare you? Shoal Kong has to use electricity in every match, including it's one that he's not in. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, I think with that said, we comfortably probably covered everything we have for Match 329. Uh, so if anyone has anything else to say, speak now, or forever hold your peace. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, Alright, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, but yeah, with that said, we'll be migrating over from Match 329 to Match 330. Uh, Rathalos versus Kong, Legendary versus Skullcrawler, uh, written by Andrew Sudomirsky and Banner by Matthew Fries. So, I know I have plenty to say. I'm mostly just going to repeat information I've said in like the comments I've made because I already, thank gosh I did because I would have forgotten it for the podcast. Uh, but I will not go first. I would rather stop start top to bottom and like you know if anything comes I'll just make mention of it. So. Joe, what did you think of it? <laughs> well, the banner is really cool. Uh, GVR did a really good, good job with this banner. I, I love the fire effect and the lighting. It it just looks really awesome. Uh, I was planning to read this today but I I one I got distracted and two I got I got the I got a toy and I had to fiddle with that until the podcast started <laughs> so so I all so with with everything I like everything. Uh, Transformers prevented me from doing KUC. <laughs> Damn. You know what? You gave your thoughts on the banner. For me, that's good enough in this case. Chose <laughs> uh... the exception, not the rule. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh... Anyway, uh, Grayshot, what do you think of Match 3.30? I quite enjoyed it. Um, it was, yeah, th this, it was 
some fantastic details and great characterization to the, all the monsters involved. Um, as we all know, this is the first match with Kong and the yeah and Rathalos. And I think both got equal treatment in regards to the star time. I think Kong probably came off a little bit better. Uh, but both got some awesome set pieces, some good moments, some good action. Uh, there were stakes, there was tension. Overall, just a, a great KWC match. Uh, I'd probably give it like an 8 out of 10 in regards to you know, the level of detail, the action, all that jazz. Um... There were some changes, but I uh, to the the monsters in this match. But I'll let you dive into that, yeah, well, as I'm sure people would be interested. Yeah. But the one thing I will dive into before I dive into the banner is uh, Kong, because Rathalos. I think most people can understand. Like, oh yeah, Rathalos. That makes sense. Uh, but why don't we have him listed as King Kong legendary? Um, and the answer is because the MonsterVerse doesn't. While in certain select areas slash markets, he's noted as King Kong in the US market, handful of other markets, the film itself, and previous films have only stated him as Kong and just referenced him as King of Skull Island. So in kind of, we, we spoke it over in, in kind of enforced by this, the merchandise, everything else, we just decided to say Kong because obviously they are two distinct characters. Kong might become king at a certain point later down, but at least for right now, he is just the legendary version of the Kong character. So, uh, yeah, that, uh, I just want to bring that little uh, tidbit into this. Um, otherwise, for the banner itself, the banner is really, really, really good. I think it's probably my favorite of the three. Uh, I am not a fan of the toys, to be honest. You can kind of tell, but... For the action and set pieces that was there, uh, hey, G GPR. It, 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 they were well, well toys. utilized. No, it didn't. <laughs> no, no, they they were well utilized for what they were, like for the poses and whatnot. You couldn't do that with a normal movie. So I, 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 I think it was well executed for the banner. And yeah, easily a highlight, if not one of the best manners of the year. It's a strong contender, and I would not be surprised to. Uh, if we don't see this in the top five for the year-end awards. Thank you. Ditto, Ditto's going to be laughing again because GPR's getting criticized. <laughs> what? I, did, I said nothing but positive things. GVR, it's your turn. What were your thoughts? Uh, well, first, the banner, it sucks. I hate it. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I'll talk about the banner real quick. Uh, yeah, Kaiju X just like posted a thing saying like, "Hey, challenge for the banner makers." And, and then he listed like the what he wanted for the banner for this. So I just I made this banner. Uh, the only images I was able to really find for like the poses I wanted, well, because I was just I started looking for the for pictures for all three combatants first, just to like get an idea of what the sort of set piece should be and I saw the image of Rathalos the Rathalos toy and thought it would be really good unfortunately it was a not the best image in terms of quality and it wasn't like the best looking toy so that's part, that's part of the reason why the banner is so dark just to hide that as best I can Yeah, but yeah. you did a good job with like the lighting, yeah. like contrast with the darkness, though. Yeah, the lighting is easily the best part of this banner by far. Because usually we don't see that. Usually there's just shadow. It's nice to see an inverse of that. Mm -hmm. Everything's a darkness, and the light is what's you know really capturing everyone's attention. Yeah, because I, I do like doing like the darkness banners that are very dark with like highlights in some way just uh, makes for a good atmosphere and we don't really see too many of them like usually they're usually banners are very well lit just all around and uh the kong the kong in the banner is also a toy but i went in with photoshop and managed to like use the clone stamp to get rid of the joints nice 
That's why it might look a bit weird if you zoom in real close in some places. Yeah, no, I couldn't really tell, so... Mm, yes, if you look, if you zoom in 3,000%, you can see a tiny joint right there. <laughs> it's automatically a failure then. <laughs> Fuck. But, uh, yeah. The, in the skull crawler, I just kind of, like, slapped him in. <laughs> just slapped him in there. <laughs> <laughs> just slapped him in. I mean, it, like, it's kind of hard to find a good image of a skull crawler. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like it makes sense with the match itself, because, like, the skull crawler comes in much later on, and it spends most of the time hiding. One thing I love is how we keep using that same image, even though it's the chibi demo, demo yeah. version. Like, the yeah. demo version. I mean, if it works, it works. What can you say? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't realize it was the Jimmy version until like after I had posted the banner on here. I mean, it's the best figure we have. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what is it? Uh, yeah, the skull crawler is the uh, Chibi Day for Real figure that came out a while ago. Yep. Oh, those things are detailed. Yeah, it doesn't look uh, like with a lot of the, those Chibi Day for Real figures. Like, it's super clearly obvious that it's an. A chibi version, but like with the skull crawler, it looks like a skull crawler. Just maybe with a larger head. Yeah, it was just yeah. like a bit bigger head. He's working out in the library. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the match itself. Very, very good. I adore this match from start to finish. All three combatants are used very well. I enjoy how. Rathalos was used very well. I enjoyed its entrance and like how deadly it feels. Kong's hints of character are very well done. They're not like super glaringly obvious, but like they're peppered in well enough to paint a picture. It works. And Ramrock is threatening. Ramrock comes off as Threatening and very clever at the same time. Which is good, given how most matches sort of tend to pick the skull crawlers as just like brainless idiots that just fling themselves into a problem head first. A fitting opponent being Red King. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's most skull crawlers, but like you get you get the feeling that Ramarok has a bit more going on in his head. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially the scene where he thwacks the one guy away with the explosives. And just you know, like didn't eat them, it was like, oh, yeah, yeah. This, but yeah, ra that Ramorak definitely has more going on in that brain than uh, the others. Yeah, the action was very well done, very tense, very brutal. I favorite part of the match is definitely the once Kong gets the axe and that from there. Especially when Ramrock starts using the axe against Kong. And, uh... Yeah. Excellent debut for both... The, for both a combatant that everyone has been anticipating heavily, and for a combatant that people were more mixed on, and is more obscure in KWC terms, but has been well received. Mm-hmm. I think the best thing that a new combatant can have is a solid debut match. And this works. Like, I bet Angira wouldn't be nearly as well received if 281 had not been a banger of a match. Yeah, that's very. That has a lot of. Uh, that has a lot to do with, like, you know, utilization of the character, too. It's like, how do they start off? What's the first impression? And first impressions are really important, so. Yeah, that's all I really have to say. I'm curious to see if there will be any more, given how it seems to end with a bit of a sequel teaser. Yeah. 
Yeah. I remember trying to actively avoid it, but then it was like things changed around. I was like, son of a gun. It was like, a, it was like this, one need, this one needs a sequel to at least resolve one of its elements, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, well. I always do this to myself. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Alex, what did you think of the match? Yeah, I have to agree. Really strong debut for Rathalos and Kong. And... Yeah, I think I kind of have to echo one of the comments for the match, uh, saying, or I think it was on the discussion thread, saying that someone thought Skullcrawler would be overshadowed, but he is actually a good, like, third combatant for the match, especially the way he was swinging Kong's axe around. That was dope. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't <laughs> think he was quite the third pillar, but oh, no, really the match wasn't. is... Yeah, yeah, Kong, it's real. This match is Rathalos versus Kong, but the Skullcrawler's impression of it is still like he is still a player in the game. He is still like, you know, a, a someone you like, not someone, a a, a interesting combatant. It's, yeah, especially with the moments like the axe that really propel him to something. Oh no, no, he, he's got some weight to throw around. Yeah, I, again, really good stuff. Rathalos and the Skullcrawlers were felt like legitimate threats Kong was a great main character to focus on and yeah I really liked him his relationship with the Iwi being shown all in all really good stuff mm -hmm. alright uh, well, Birdman if you wanted to like I guess type your thoughts or what have you uh uh, but, you know, just let that be known. Uh, in the meantime, Nagoda, just say your thoughts while Birdman types this out. Oh, oh, my turn? Alright, so... Like, this is a fun match. Like, and a really good introduction to both, like, Legendary Kong and the Rathalos. The Greater Rathalos, I mean. Anyways, uh... Well, I've... I love like the use of the skull caller in this one, like the the voice mimicry finally being used good, and the whole like wrapping his tail around the axe to like swing it around as a weapon. Plus, I I really like how the Rathalos just went around, saw an island, and then decided I'm gonna conquer this place now. And then he went around and literally just started burning the entire island down. That's his definition of conquering. I must reduce everything to ash. Yes. <laughs> yes. He must reduce everything to ash and make it his own, apparently. Plus, I like the explanation where Kong just found this axe like beneath Skull Island. Because I guess that would kind of make sense since they apparently came out of like Skull Island. Like, There's apparently like a hollow earth vortex somewhere down there, yeah. so would make sense that one of the axes would be there. Also, I love the banner. Like the, I think I, I already said this, but like the light contrasting against darkness thing is like rarely ever seen. And it's good here. So... Bacon, you got anything to say? You fucked me out of my Rathalos tribute, so I automatically have to hate it. Damn. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, this is a pretty good match. Uh, the batter that GDR made looks fantastic. Uh, the action was really solid. The characterization was really strong. Um, I remember the process of, like he sent it to me early to look over and I had seen the movie and he had it and I went you're you're gonna get mad at yourself yeah. and then he went oh it, it, it's, it's fine uh, I'll deal with it and then he got mad and then he had to do it again twice technically <laughs> yeah twice <laughs> so that, that that you know that was a process but <laughs> remember kids don't write your matches off of trailers yeah Assumptions, they go a long way, don't they? This is the second time you've done this, Kaiju X. 
When was the first time? Uh, the the one where we did the yeah that oh, one. Oh yeah, two seventy five. That's remember right. Remember when we uh, when we assumed based off a trailer, <laughs> right? That match took a long time to get released. <laughs> Thank Damn. God I only did one part. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, overall, this was a great introduction for Rathalos and Legendary Kong. Um, not, not really much to say. It's, it's a very solid match. <laughs> Alright. Uh, but yeah, no, that was, uh, yeah. Uh, so I guess on to me then, since Birdman didn't have anything posted, whatever. Uh. Oh, no, he did say. <laughs> oh, wh where did he say it? I, I don't see it. Oh, no, he didn't say, like, just, I think he's probably busy with something, but he does say, good, gonna say now this is a good contender for match of the year. Oh, okay, gotta say now. Okay, contender. Okay, okay. No, I, he must have just posted that, because I was, like, looking at it, like, oh, he didn't say anything yet. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I imagine he's probably busy, like, doing something right now. Probably. So he can't, like, type out a big thing. Multitask. Throw, grow third arm. <laughs> How dare you. How dare you not be mutated and have four arms? What are you? A two armed and freak? <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Big plus. But yeah, no, I know this one has a little bit of history. And I, most of the I have mentioned in, like, say, the trivia or the KDBC general discussion thread. So if you want more specifics, but then by all counts, please look at that. But I think the important beats are. I started this match, literally wrote this within the span of a month, and started it in March. Uh, like, early March, because I was like, I was reading through uh, a submission, which, you know, as you can probably tell from, <laughs> from Bacon's initial comment of, I have been cucked. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was looking through that, because originally the debut for Rathalos was going to be different. We uh, And it was like... I sort of, it was sort of like a combination of layers of like, oh, we don't have Kong. We, you know, we have Rathalos up and coming. And just, it was just a, uh, like a combination of factors that led to the decision of, I kind of want to write a Kong versus Rathalos match. So I did. Uh, I did that. And then partway through, I was like, hmm, should I add the skull crawlers? Because I had already sort of peppered them in the beginning, where it was like, you know, skull crawler, you know, they, they get bombarded by Rathos' fire, and it's like, you know what, I'll include them too, because it, uh, because yeah, I know, like, the skull, like, not even just Ramorak, but just the skull crawlers in general, so the point where, like, the mass army, uh, like, you know, starts fighting both Kong and Rathos, I consider that also part of, like, you know, the skull crawler's involvement with the fight, so it's like, yeah, you can, they fight a bunch of the smaller ones before the big one pops up, naturally. Uh, so it was like yeah no I had written that within the span of a month sort of bouncing back between editing that the the other Rathlos match and then writing this one but eventually I sort of like ultimately came to the decision to double down and gu go gung ho with Legendary Kong and Rathlos since I feel like hey you know this match would be according to calculations we could slate out to come out like you know early to mid April you know, it would be really close to where the movies come out. And, you know, if we really, if I really wanted to go for, like, 3.30, it would be right off the heels of King Kong month. Uh, it would, you know, like, the way I had designed the match was not, I just went with what served best for the story. I didn't do it with, like, I didn't have, like, you know, let's be different. Uh, I was always open to just sort of, like, you know, who was going to be the natural winner. And while I had a one projected in my mind... Let me put it this way, Kong, Showa Kong's no victories were not an influence on Kong's victory in this match. You know, that was not a influence for me, it was just simply, uh, it was just simply a matter of, uh, like, you know, that was just the way the story went, it was the version that felt best to me that Kong comes out the winner here. Uh, even though I was absolutely open to let either Rathalos or Skullcrawler take the fight if I wanted them to. Uh, 
but it's like it, again everything just felt more organic keeping it to Kong so I was like alright I'll do that uh, and then uh, likewise uh, so and yeah as the guys have mentioned I based Kong based on what we saw in the trailers now it wasn't too hard to imagine how he would act because of Kong Skull Island so it's like hey we already have a rough idea Granted, like, him knuckle-walking was thing I was not expecting when, when I saw the movie. And, you know, I didn't need to rewrite it to fit that. I could just have him knuckle-walk another time. But Nope, now the match is ruined, Kaiju X. Now you have to rewrite it with knuckle-walking. <laughs> blast it. Uh, but, yeah. He base boosted you when he said knuckles. <laughs> but, yeah, no, once... Yeah, no, the big debate was the nature of the axe. Because originally I had... I always sort of saw the axe being independent of Godzilla's biology. You know, even though it has a dorsal spin of his, I sort of, like, mentally saw it as, like, a thing that operates on its own rules, not under Godzilla's rules. And that's where things sort of got a little tricky it was like yeah the film only displays the axe absorbing Godzilla's atomic ray in the multiple instances where it does absorb stuff so it was a natural fit to uh tr so we we definitely had to do a couple of compromises but I felt like I don't I hate being the exception to the like even this one, the final version we have, I think is still a exception to the rule standard. Like, I would try and not to do this again in the future, unless it's totally okay with everyone here to just do it. Because uh, it's like, I, I do not like being the exception to the rule, but it's also unfortunately like a byproduct of trying to release a match within a very quick time, like time slot to make sure it's sort of like it's partly somewhat of a business move too of like you know getting the most public availability by having kong legendary in there you know i figured he'd be a big draw get get in attention and so far raffalo seems to be doing that job too <laughs> from the uh for general reception we've been getting uh and yeah it's it, it's a bit of a yeah we, we discussed this it's a bit of a gray area i think we allowed it this time but we would prefer in the future to go by the standard rules that we've uh set up <laughs> yeah no the i mean like the ultimate version here like was just ultimately kong could just willingly use the explosive punch even though we know in the movie it's a result of pretty much like a sustained beam of radiation that's just like overcharge the axe if you will like that's the thing that makes the most sense and that's what we would rather keep to moving forward consider like yeah consider the explosive punch used twice here to be somewhat of an exception even so this is it's one of those things where it's like this is the most flexible i will be when it comes to the nature of the axe in the future i would much rather try to be more closer to what it is fortunately uh fortunately though through these changes and through discussion we have well, let's, well, I'm not going to say much, but there are surprises you may see with this axe moving forward. So, uh, anyway, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to read something uh, uh, Birdman wrote real quick. The story really encaptures the reader to the point where I can almost visualize everything that happens inside my head. Ooh, thank you. The way all three combatants use their abilities in such creative ways is amazing. I imagine is amazing. It throws you. It throws enough twists and turns at you that even though you would imagine who would win, you're left doubting yourself just enough to keep your interest. And thank you. That was, uh, in a way, that was a lot. Like, ah, uh, let me put it this way: Rathlos's poison claws, which granted is not in the movie per se, it's just part of the natural Rathlos biology. Oh man, that was the biggest thing that allowed this match to happen the way it did. Because it was like, oh, the, oh man, that that helped so much. <laughs> Oof, thank goodness. Because yeah, no, that really gave Rathlos a much needed, uh, like a much needed edge over the competition. So I was like, sweet. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, did you mention that the original version? 
was had tongs actually absorbing wrestles with fire. Right, right. I think I was just about to say that. Uh, that like, yeah, no. The original base, the basic rundown of the other version that had happened within the span of ten days <laughs> uh, was the first one was like Ra- he was just gonna absorb Rathalos's fire, but there was a lot of disagreement with just the idea of uh, like you know the axe absorbing fire. It's like oh, it should be more like pure energy. Then it was like the reasoning for that was that like the whole city was on fire and wasn't absorbing the fire right during right. the final fight something like that. So I went with lightning and originally there was no lightning storm that came across the island. That was a byproduct, so I could allow that to happen. <laughs> uh, but I kind of hated the lightning approach because it felt way too contrived and maybe subconsciously a little close to the whole Shoah Kong thing. So I was like. Cool visual for both of them, but it was also like, uh, I was not too huge on it. So I ultimately opted for, uh, I think the, I think I ultimately just opted for the leniency of as long as Kong can just use the explosive punch of the axe, that's all I need. Like, that was the ah, issue. So with- you, di- you didn't want to go show a Kong, but without show a Kong. Right. Well, the you issue with the lightning to- was because I brought up like, so, Godzilla's spines should be able to absorb anything Kong's axe can. Yeah. That. So mm-hmm. we're saying that Godzilla's spines could absorb lightning. Mm-hmm. Right, which would be probably a little much out of, from the intention of the character. At least with the version we have, where it's just like you know, uh, yeah. You know, at least the version Godzilla, King of the Monsters, would like to come in and be like, "Well, he absorbed King Ghidorah as when he burning, was burning Go- mode. As burning, yeah, and burning. That's as burning Godzilla. That's different." That is very different. Godzilla wasn't absorbing crap during the first fight. Yeah. Or... I mean, what is this? A Showa Godzilla spine? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. yeah, my my note is like I get like a you know, there could be cool things done with the axe that you could then you then do like different techniques. Like for instance, if you overclocked it's like a PC, you overclock the axe to burning mode and then have it absorb another energy. Fine, and have it like doing nuclear pulses off the cuff. Totally get it. Okay, but at least off from from its basic format, it should just be radiation, right? And or in its base form, yeah. Yeah, it should just be uh, yeah, basically just radiation. Mm-hmm. Right. Unfortunately, the move, the movie, and the book, uh, the novelization do clarify that's like, hey, Godzilla can absorb any kind of radiation and basically convert it into Hollow Earth energy, which is Godzilla's radioactive source. So it's like, okay. Cool, so we know that any form of radiation is okay. We know that for a fact. <laughs> well, there goes Rodan's uranium heat beam. Wait. That's radiation. That's uranium yeah, radiation. Yeah, exactly. He's going to shoot Kong with it. He's going to block with his axe, and he's going to get a nuclear pulse axe to the face. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, pretty much. I mean, he's just going to get sawed in half. There's that, too. <laughs> that, too. You could have Kong charge the axe by just, like, destroying a nuclear power plant, just, like, holding his axe. Heck, the... yeah. So, yeah, no, I think... He's I just could... holding it over the power plant like it's a fire pit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. So, fortunately, though, the last version where it became pure radiation, and, you know, it's like, oh, Kong muzzles it into the skull crawler's pit and just lets the radiation soak it up. It's like, you know that has to be silly because it's like, oh, well, I know there was mention of, like, radiation under Skull Island or something or just Hollow Earth, whatever. Just roll with it. It did at least lead to the scene where Kong, like, you know, you know, Kong, you know, gets his revenge. You know, like, you know, I guess just like a much-needed spark, which... Funny enough, ties into the earlier bit with, like, Kong remembering the death of his parents. I was like, you know what? It helped. If these changes helped the story, then I was all for it. And lo and behold, yeah, no, the change, the final change made was one I was most happy with because it added something as opposed to taking away something. Because I was not, like, to remove, to remove Kong losing the axe would be to lose the skull crawler getting the axe so to me that was not going to change no matter how much you would tell me otherwise (laughs) Uh. 
So, but yeah, no, it's like, as long as it added something, that was the point, like, I was trying to look for. And it's like, yeah, sure, it's a little weird for Kong to just go away for a little bit while Rathos tortures the Skullcrawler, but you know what? It's fine. I, I'm willing to live with it. I'm willing to let it go on the merit that's like, you know, it helped, you know, push forward Kong's character a little more. So I was more than fine with that. <sighs> yes, and again, we should stress the ending line of this is a, you know, that is fine, but it's a for lie. the most part, it is, yeah, t yeah, it's kind of like a, well, this can be done in the very end, but it's, Kong is Kong. He's not King Kong. He's King Kong here. <laughs> he is King Kong here for one line and then the match ends. Yes. And literally, I like it says, he was King Kong, winner, Kong legend. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, no, you're funny. not. That's even better with his picture. With his picture. <laughs> oh, Lordy. He was King Kong. Kong legendary. It's just him frowning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Monk. Uh, there is no King Kong legendary. <laughs> Go home. Get out. Uh, I love that that is the picture we chose for Kong. Just him frowning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's not really. Fr He's just kind of like chilling. He's vibing. <laughs> that should have been, like been, been, been the one where he scratched his ass. <laughs> he he, he kind of looks like a scowl, kind of like an owl. But it, I wanted to choose. So, fun facts we had different options for Kong's image, but we decided on this one mainly because, and uh, my, biggest, uh, my biggest input was. This is very much reflective of how Kong is naturally. Like, he's, you know, curious. You know, he's not aggressive. Like, we had a very, uh, you know, aggressive-looking Kong image. I'm just like, that's not how he normally is, though. Right. It's like him, like, hyper, like, I'm in battle yeah, mode. Yeah. Like, I just kind of wanted something on Skull Island with the green to really, like, differentiate it from all, all the other banners and monster images we have. Yeah. Because I don't think we really have one that really has a nice hue green behind it, as much to the extent to which he does here. Hmm, that's true. And likewise, it was just natural colors for Kong, which I was more supportive of, so. It, it should have been the one from Skull Island around the Meyer Squid scene where he's just looking, just staring off into the, <laughs> like, distance. You know, one of those images that just goes monk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It should, it should have been. It should have just been. Okay, right. so basically, I'm monkey. <laughs> monkey killed Grayshot. Damn. Oh no. Monk. Oh no. Hey, that'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically, I'm monkey. <laughs> but yeah. Um. Uh... But yeah, no. We, yeah, we, we ultimately found a nice finalized point for the uh, uh skull crawl, the axe breaker, th the, th the axe breaker, fin breaker, broil axe thing. Even the name of the royal axe, like I had not realized that a breaker could refer to something that's like a weapon. I'm like, that's a thing. I thought a fin, the name, the official like stat thing for the movie. I thought a fin breaker was like a thing he was gonna do to snap Godzilla's fin off. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> and, then, and then Christian Salibert had made the suggestion. And I had asked him. I was like, wait. That's what that is? And he was like, oh, yeah, no. So I, I was under the impression that the Finn Breaker was, uh, was the axe. I was like, oh, my gosh. And I looked into it. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> the ass clapper. <laughs> the ass clapper. <laughs> ass clapper. Dick blasted. Uh... <laughs> Uh, but anyway. That's what King Kong's gonna do to your mom. Dink blast it. <laughs> uh, anyway. Oh, uh, <laughs> gosh. But yeah, no, it was like... And we had already settled on the Royal Axe, which is derived from the OST. Like, that's what the track is called, the Royal Axe. I was like, okay. So, ultimately, I just did the Laser Beam Atomic Ray thing for Mechagodzilla, where it's like, ah, just keep both names in there. List all the te distinguished techniques, even if it is just... Monkey air slash or monkey ground pound. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's like, yep, that, that's why that's there in the way it is. So, you know what? It's all present in the movie. I ain't gonna argue with it. 
because yeah, when I got the novel, the, I was asked like, okay, let us know if the war bats have any names, and let us know if the axe is called anything. The war bats are not nothing. named, and the axe is just called a scepter and an axe. <laughs> war bats are pretty useless. Rip. Damn. The Hellhawk got named. <laughs> <laughs> Like the novel name drops the Hellhawks, but not the Warbats. That is so weird. Hashtag stop the Hollow Earth monster hate. <laughs> anyway, oh lordy. But yeah, um, as far as any other trivia concerning 330, for me personally, um, nothing much. Uh, like, I do have a sequel in mind, but. As for not whether or not it'll get passed, so far the general positive reception may lead to a sequel happening, but I don't think, don't expect it for a while. That's all I have to say. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, with that said, did anyone else have any additional thoughts or things to say with Mash 330? Mm, okay. Okay. Monkey fight two big lizards. Monk. <laughs> Alright, but yeah. Uh, but yeah. Um, so, gonna see what happened to Grayshot. Why he just magically disappeared. He's like, hey, where'd you he's get... Dead. Yeah, I, I guess the internet probably dropped for him for something. I don't oh, know. No, he said, like, he'll be back in a bit. Yeah. But he's usually, usually back, like, before we migrate to another match. Usually. <laughs> yeah, he has he has he has special powers to let him know that. <laughs> oh, there, there he is. There he is. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I said I'd be right back. Oh. You know, my brain forgot that. Am I the only one who heard him say that? I think yeah. I no, I heard him say it, I but then it. I forgot it. Like, oh no, I've been abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> Help! <laughs> and you take fucking meds, you old man. <laughs> no, <laughs> the dementia is kicking our a your ass. <laughs> like when the teacher walks out of class for a minute, and just the students go insane. <laughs> <laughs> it's like baby permanency. Fucking the parents leave for two seconds. And babies don't know that they exist. <laughs> uh, good grief. Good grief. All right. All right, there we go. Uh, but yeah, uh, Grayshot, did you have anything else to say concerning 330, or...? That was everything I had. Okay, that was everything you had? All right. And I think that was every everything for everything else. So, uh, we will migrate yonder over to match 331, the most recent KWC as of this time. Matt, uh, Frankenstein versus Godzilla Showa. Written by... Vincent Roger and Matthew Freeze by Wonderful Banner by Landon Soto, which was totally not updated at the last second. <clears throat> uh, and the match that doesn't exist. <laughs> the match that doesn't exist apparently. Oh yeah, that's right. Because the because <laughs> uh, I swapped out the banner, so I don't know if that affected like the other banners, which I think it might have. Well, that and the fact that, that affected it, the whole match. Yeah, that and the fact that like Showa Godzilla stats still aren't on the combatant statistics and Frankenstein hasn't been updated oh, yeah, that's included right. in this match. Yeah, no, I think that was a hiccup. That, like, Grayshot, did you send the show of Godzilla stats to Anthony? It's going around the same time as my review for Godzilla vs. Kong. Oh. Oh, yeah. Then... Damn. Uh... <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, uh, I said it all with, um, I uh, sent my Godzilla vs. Kong review to Anthony, and I also combined with the Godzilla stats and all that, so I don't know when that's going up, but I know I put it all together. Okay. If all else fails, I'll just have my brother do it, So, because I, I know I already sent him the stuff just in case something like this happens, because it always does. I feel like Godzilla stats in the yeah. KWC just like exactly what they are in the KWC -E. Pretty much, for fortunately, so it's like, it, it, don't panic, the KWC -E has you covered. <laughs> <laughs> 90 it meters, like 40,000 tons. Damn. 
I think he's gonna put the stats in with Great Shots Review. We'll see. So, so those were my thoughts on the movie. Show God Godzilla show a length length ninety meters <laughs> or height. <laughs> 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 Uh. Yeah, those are the that's the information we really want to know. But yeah, uh, uh Joe, what do you think of Match Three Thirty One? Well, the banner's really good. Uh, Ditto did Ditto did a really good job with it. Love the fire and Godzilla and Frankenstein were great. As for the match, uh, I didn't read it, but I, I had I had kind of a I had kind of a part in with it getting posted because I I believe Bacon said that he made he wrote this match, and I suggested that it should be put in the KDUC because originally it was going to be a KDUCE. And I said, since we're getting got Show Godzilla in, and we're retiring Frankenstein, we should post this match for the KVC. And that, that's pretty much it, I think. All right. The highest honor one could get from Joe is saying banner nice. <laughs> so, Truly. I have I, I'm gonna go back in time and say we shouldn't we shouldn't put this in the KBC. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Uh, anyway. Uh great shot, what'd you think of the match? I generally enjoyed it. Good human angle. The banner. Uh, I'll hold off on that for a second. Good human angle. Godzilla is threatening. This is very much. I don't think most people. I, I kind of fu find this funny. Most people probably wouldn't think of Godzilla Showa in this regard. Uh, when they're like Godzilla Showa, oh yes, the hero, and then you just see him destroying Japan, Frankenstein being absolutely trounced. It's like, uh. But I, I, I do like the idea of this match, which is the scrapped film, which was Godzilla versus Frankenstein, or loosely. Oh, it, only, yeah, in name. only in name. Only a name, because because the scrap well, the, it, the scrap film had Frankenstein as the greater of two evils. Yeah, that's not that's definitely not the case in this match. Right, um, right. <laughs> but no, it has some good build up. Godzilla is given enough malice, and uh, he, he's given enough to where it's like, oh no, Frankenstein doesn't stand a chance. But he does. He does uh, pull some good moves. I do like some small details, like Baragon's horn is a dagger. That was I I, I quite enjoyed uh, that little like uh, nod. Um, otherwise, yeah, I the action was great. The ending, it was like how is I honestly did not know how this was going to end, and I was satisfied with how it did. Uh, it is sad Frankenstein had to die, but Godzilla Showa still lives on and. You know what? He he might have died, but he got the win. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Which yes is a thing that can happen. Uh, yeah, I actually like raised questions to Bacon about that when I when we first finished the match. I was like, "Are you sure Frankenstein's the winner?" But he was like, "Yeah, he is," and I agree with it. Just like how King Kong won by beating Gamera, Ultraman, and Godzilla by dying. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's right. He got the moral victory. Yeah, the way I see it, like, Frankenstein accomplished his goal while Godzilla did not. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Frankenstein's goal was to save the city and drive Godzilla away. Which he was he successful succeeded. in. It just cost him his life. That was all. Yeah, Godzilla's goal was to get to that KFC, and he never got to the KFC. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he wanted that chicken, but he was... No. Dang. Yeah, uh... But, uh... No, yeah, g great. This is... Uh, I think I like Kaiju X's a smidge more, but this is still a really good match and easily the second best of the three. Hmm. Bruh. 
by comparison, it's reasonable. But yeah, no, that's right. I for, you know, somehow my brain completely forgot about that co cool friggin' uh, Baragon Horn spear. That was really cool. Yeah, the he like, again he like sharpened it and like used it as a weapon. He's like it. It, it was a great connection to the previous match without it being like too previous over the movie. top. Yeah, yeah, sorry, previous movie, yes. And it also kind of ties into I, I don't know if it's just it's it's a it's a neat connection, especially with like we have the dorsal axe, right? Now now Frankenstein has the Paragon spear. Oh right, right. Sort of like Monster Hunter influences are becoming real. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh but yeah uh those are my general thoughts like really it, it was really really damn good and i will say this this is fantastic the little embers falling down the fire it's just it's magnifique mm -hmm. it uh if if this one if if uh rathlos versus kong versus skull is gonna be in the top five this is easily gonna be in the top three it's going to be hard to beat this one out. Ooh. We'll see. So nice job, Landon. Uh, but yeah, for you know. But yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, anything else, Gray Shot? Or... No, that's all I got to say about that. All right. GBR, what you think <laughs> of it? <laughs> uh, I am happy with this. I am very happy with this. Yeah, for some history on my part of this, uh, this was originally supposed to be a KWCE, and Bacon just, like, was struggling to, like, figure out how to fully write this, like, get through it, so he just asked me to help, and I did. And, uh, yeah, I'd say, it, I'd say, like, when term, in terms of, like, who wrote how much, I'd say it was, like, 50-50, because we pretty much, like, kept switching back and forth between parts. Ooh, yeah, it, was like, it was very much so that when after one of us would finish writing the other one would get on it immediately and write the other part whoa whoa yeah like whoa. so yeah there, you guys were the mascus that killed call or not killed Kong, killed frankenstein me <laughs> whoa <laughs> whoa yeah i knew that it was gonna be like Frank, I knew. I believe Bacon planned the whole thing of like Frankenstein taking Godzilla off the cliff to do that, and I, I was the one who wrote out the specific things of like how it went down. Yeah, I'm the one who had Frankenstein get his brain boiled <laughs> after getting his arm crushed, and then in, and then stabbing Godzilla's eye out. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, it's a it's a physical fight between two kaiju. It's gonna be messy. Oh yeah, oh for sure. Especially when you have the psychopathic Showa Godzilla fighting a humanoid, and generally humanoids, maybe even if they're not the strongest, they know to go for weak spots. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just I'm very happy with this match. How it turned out. Happy with the way the human characters are written and the way the monsters are written. Great, I mentioned this of like usually when people think of Showa Godzilla, they think of like the heroic kung fu action hero of the '70s. Conveniently forgetting the early '60s where he was just as destructive as most Godzillas are. Yeah, I know. I I find that to be a hilarious like contrast. That's like, oh yeah, no, we're getting Showa Godzilla in the key to be seen. His first match is him as the villain. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'm especially happy with how Frankenstein turned out. Like, I think he has written very well. He's seen companionship because that's what all humans desire, even though he's far from a normal human. <laughs> Except for GPR. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> And 
Oh, yeah, the banner. Man, some people don't like companionship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the banner. Uh, props to Ditto, absolutely. It looks amazing. It's the two of them surrounded by fires, embers falling down. Like, it looks awesome. All right, that's my piece. All right. Alex, what'd you think of I'll that? let Bacon oh. speak more on, like, what it was originally supposed to be. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to Alex, go next? Yeah, yeah, or? Alex, you yeah, can go. Yeah, go. Okay, sorry. Whoa. <laughs> but, yeah, starting with the banner, that is epic. Like, it get, like an epic showdown. Like, pro probably my favorite of the year so far for banner-wise some really good shit like god damn that the embers the fire no this is this is intense like i'm already already know i'm in for a good time just by looking at that banner as he would say it's kino <laughs> yeah um also hooray my head cannon was used with godzilla regenerating his appearance changing yep so that, that that's nice to see. Um, yeah, this really felt like a natural continuation of Frankenstein vs. Baragon in the Showa Godzilla series. Um, yeah, Godzilla's goddamn intimidating. Frankenstein's really sympathetic, trying to reconnect with the people he was friends with in his movie. And Frankenstein's really the one you root for because you want him to get that life, like be around the people he cares about. But unfortunately, fate has different plans in mind. And Godzilla kind of ruins that by boiling his brain and killing him, even though he saves the day. But yeah, I was really engaged with this match the whole way through. This is, again, it up there with Godzilla vs. Degora. It's, it's probably my favorite match of the year so far. It, it, it's just freaking good. I was just engaged the whole way through when I was reading it over to pass along. Yeah, you guys did an incredible job. Getting yeah, loved every minute of it. Those are my general thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, no, I'll say what I said on the post, uh, what I said on the forums, it's like, you know, this one was quite a treat. Like, the, serving as a s sequel to, like, Frankenstein vs. Baragon, a homage to the scrap Frankenstein vs. Godzilla, and as, again, I just say homage, not a direct adaptation for obvious reasons. Uh, yeah, no, Frankenstein is not the greater of two evils. I don't know how you do that with Frankenstein, but all right, <laughs> bring it up. That's why I made the joke of like, you would need to be like the strapped bio monster from the Heisei series to be any sort of greater threat. <laughs> yeah. Because uh... Showa Frankenstein, he's a good guy, and he's also smaller and lighter than most of the roster. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, yep, no, that, that's like that was not happening. He is the underdog or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But yeah, no, uh, so yeah, no, that kind of tickled my, it, it was just really nice to have the two fight, and that felt very proper, in, like, knowing the fact that Frankenstein's gonna be put into the retirement home, like, it's nice to see that matchup happen before he left, so, it's like, I feel real, I feel content knowing the fact that he's at least fought Godzilla Showa in a, in an environment that felt appropriately show up. Like, this feels like a nice continuation off of Frankenstein vs. Baragon while still doing new things for Frankenstein and keeping it uh, kind of, like, interesting and dynamic throughout. Uh, so, yeah, no, this one this one definitely held my attention. I was reading through it. Like, ha, dang, this got brutal. And, yeah, no, really enjoyed it all the way through. And any match that uses the severed limbs is a plus. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, no, I would say a bold move letting Frankenstein win, but it, it is one that makes sense. Uh, it, it makes, it makes sense and I am perfectly fine with it. So, 
I am perfectly content. And you know what? Showa Godzilla is obviously going to have more matches under his belt. You know, his victory, his draw can come another time. Let this be Frankenstein's moment to shine, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, I told Bacon, the loss is going to be quickly made up for by the 70,000 matches where it's 70s Godzilla who wins because he's fighting a bad monster and he's a good guy. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Damn. No, Showa Godzilla's only going to win as the villain from here on. Anyway. <laughs> uh... But yeah, uh, you know, re really good match all around. And uh, to quote a comment, Rip Frankenstein. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see. I, I, don't, I didn't have anything too crazy to say. I just thought you guys did a really good job with it. Uh, you know, set the stage real nicely. And the two had a very, very nice, like, you know, David versus Goliath kind of battle. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, not much to say. Not much to say beyond that, other than Killer Banner from Ditto, which was re-updated on the site because it was the wrong version. I was like, gosh darn it. <laughs> gosh darn it. Uh, anyway. Uh, Nagoto, what do you think of the match? A lot of... It was really fun, like, seeing, like, Frankenstein, like, just having, like, a Baragon knife, apparently, eating the giant sea serpent. And like just basically how he survived, like he just fell into like a chasm in the hollow earth and just ate everything that came after him. Plus the whole like they're basically like two sides of the same coin. Like they're both the uh, what's it called? Byproducts of like nuclear the nuclear age. And they both have like reasons to like hate each other. Like Godzilla hates humans. Frankenstein's a giant human, so of course he's gonna go target him. And as for Frankenstein, this thing's attacking humans, so he has to go fight him. Mm -hmm. Plus, I like how he, you guys brought back the whole the two scientists from the movie as well. And I will say, I was a bit surprised to, see, to suddenly see the mutant Godzilla Saurus being mentioned. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, like, this was a lot of, this match was a lot of fun. Like, a lot of, like, brutal battle in this one. Also, the banner looks amazing. Like, I love, like, the burning <laughs> landscape and stuff. The, the dog goes, this match is cringe. <laughs> Uh, what else? Oh yeah, I, I like the ending was nice, like the whole throwing him off a cliff to get rid of Godzilla thing, because that is just a Showa Godzilla plot point right there. Big cliff, throw him off the cliff and you win. The weakness of all early Showa monsters: yeah. cliffs. Cliffs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Damn. Uh, oh, yeah. Bacon, go ahead. Alright, so... I'll go into the history before I go into, like, the general thoughts, but what had it sparked this idea was I had just finished the Criterion collection. I was a bit late to the party, finally got the movies, watched all of them again. And I felt a re sudden like appreciation for the Showa Godzilla movies. It's like now my favorite era of the character. Uh and I wanted to do something like the AU of what if Godzilla just continued being well like so I gave the idea of Ghidorah never happened Ghidorah never showed up 
and then I went from there. I looked at the roster, and I saw Frankenstein. And wait a minute, that's a canceled movie. That would be an interesting thing to at least put an homage to. And it slowly went from there. Eventually, it was hard, like I couldn't find, I guess, the right pacing, and it was hard for characterization. Mainly because I, my anxiety was very much, get this perfect, get this right. So I immediately went, GVR, could, could, could you help me with your, you know, writing, please? Uh, I, I'm, I'm freaking, I don't know how to do this. Um, and we went from there. Originally, this was a KWC, uh, and it sequels, this will be a series, uh, but... This was originally going to be a QWC E series in which this uh, next match would have been show a camera. The reason that those dropped was what when Joe brought that up uh, that Frankenstein was getting retired and Godzilla needed a debut match. That was a very good point, and GBR quickly edited the show a camera tease and put in the Rodan tease. And then another reason was it was kind of, I couldn't figure out how to make the plot of the first Gamera movie work within the Showa Godzilla continuity because Showa Gamera is kind of dookie. <laughs> and another thing was that it was just very much, it was a drag. I wasn't really feeling it. I eventually just lost interest. And... What I had planned. And as far as uh, general thoughts, I loved what GVR did with Frankenstein. I'm really proud of my characterization for Godzilla, of how he was just pure rage. Um... Bringing back characters from Co Conquers the World was very important. I wanted to establish continuity for one, and two, I just really like Frankenstein Conquers the World, so I wanted to use those characters. Um, let's see. Yeah, and with the Frankenstein getting the win, when GVR asked me, he was like, God Godzilla did just murder him, so how come Frankenstein gets the win? It was very much... He made his goal. He protected the citizens Godzilla's way. Plus, it's the story of the underdog. Like, you guys made the David and Goliath uh, similarity, and like, yeah, that, now thinking about it, that is pretty apparent. Uh, overall, I am quite proud of this product. It's I'm looking forward to working more on this AU, and I am not only, like one. I helped debut Showa Godzilla, so that's a little proud. But I'm also glad that I did that with my friend. Hell yeah. So that makes this match a little more special. It wasn't just a debut that I did. It, I did it with my friend. Aww. That means a lot. Aww. Yeah. Shucks. Now just remember, send that money to him by the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? He got paid in weed that he won't smoke? <laughs> <laughs> he would just sit there forever, just him staring at it. It's like, why did Bacon send me this? <laughs> He's gonna throw it in the trash. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm just know that that Rodan tease wasn't just tease that will happen eventually. This will be a series that is very much a tribute to the Showa era of film. And I'm when I'm not working on my like. My other series for the KWC, I'll be working on this. I'm very excited. And I'm really happy that everyone's happy with this. 
said, those are my thoughts. Hell yeah. I pat you on the back, but you're on the other side of the United States, so you'll just have to deal with me patting the computer. There. Oh god, that that's what stretchy arm get get away, please. <laughs> Quick retract. <laughs> <Never mind. laughs> Edward's hand just breaks through bacon screen. <laughs> you are now part of the KWC roster. Yeah. <laughs> uh but yeah, uh, do we have any additional thoughts concerning the 331 before we go over to the KDBCE? They came at this. The only thing I, uh, the only thing I forgot to say is that, like, I am super happy with like how smart I portrayed Frankenstein during the actual fight itself, like mainly mainly with the fire stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, having Frankenstein be like just using his intelligence was something we were both like, yeah, we we need that. Uh, but with that said, we will be migrating over from match 331 to KDBCE match 67. Uh, Ozaru Gohan and Gamma Heisei versus Gauss Heisei and Godzilla 2001. <laughs> uh, so this one, uh, this one was written by Shipper's Dreamer, also known as Harley. Uh, and believe it or not, <gasps> I actually read it. I actually took the time out of my life to read it. So I finally could talk about a KWCE in the Harley era. (laughs) Finally. (laughs) At long last, old man. It was funny because I... I'm going to teach you this lesson, old man. (laughs) We'll freaking, uh, yeah, no, the funny, like, the funny part was that I was going to hold the KWCE a couple... the KWCC a couple days earlier, but I didn't because I wasn't feeling up to it. And then partly because the day I wanted to do it was like I hadn't read the match up until yesterday. So I was like, oh, oh, thank gosh. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm glad I finally took time to sit down and read. But anyway, uh, going for the top. Joe, what do you think of the KWCE? Oh, he's dead. He, he's mute. His dog murdered him. Uh, Gray Shot, did you read it? I did not. Okay, GVR, what do you think of it? <laughs> I really loved this match. I think it is the best KWC E of the year so far. Obviously, that doesn't mean a whole lot because it's only one of three. But Damn. I, but I mean, I highly doubt that it will be topped this year because it was super good. Yeah, it pretty much reads like a DBZ movie, but a good one. Not, 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 not by a Broly. <laughs> or I, second coming. Well, I was going to say, the second one's far worse. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, like a good one. Because it has the same sort of feel as a DBZ movie, but it's, you know, actually still quality. <laughs> yeah. yeah, characters are written well. Love the way that the lores are all blended together. It, Godzilla, Gamera, and Gauss feel like they are part of the world and don't just feel like they're stuffed in. Like, Harley takes the time to explain why they are there. Especially with Godzilla, because she ties it into King Piccolo in a way that makes a lot of sense and is supported by Dragon Ball lore. The action is very well done. Both, well, yeah, the kaiju fights are super well done, but what is also really cool to see is like the Z warriors fighting Gauss and Godzilla. Like, that's something that you obviously can't do in the KWC because Toho doesn't have anything like that. And in the KWCE, it's something you haven't really seen up until this point. Mm-hmm. But yeah, seeing like super powered humans fighting kaiju is really cool. And it works. Uh, yeah. I uh, really enjoyed how GMK Godzilla is written as a very immense and intimidating threat. Which you might not think so when you see the title of the match and it's like, oh, he's in DBZ world. He's just going to get destroyed immediately. But no, it 
he still comes off as a threat. Mm -hmm. Which is helped because like it's early Z and not Super Saiyans. We can destroy the planet with our finger. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it actually is like tied into the Z another Z movie, which I really like, the Tree of Life one. Tree of Might. Tree of Might. Might. Yeah. Yeah. As the highlight of the match is obviously the ending of the fight with Gamera using a spirit bomb. Spoilers, anyway. <laughs> it, it's fine. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm just jagging around, that's all. He said spoilers for the KWCE match, but didn't say spoilers when Ray shot and didn't mention Frankenstein dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I literally spoiled <laughs> that Frankenstein gets his brain boiled, Godzilla gets hurled off a cliff, <laughs> minus an eye. Right. And, and yeah. now Kaiju X says spoilers? <laughs> Consistency, yeah. what's that? <laughs> yeah, no, like, I think this is a very strong contender for the KWCE of the year. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. I'm sorry for rambling. All right. uh, <laughs> Alex. My brain does not work. It, it, it's being tested. It. <laughs> but, Alex, what'd you think of the match? Uh. I thought it was pretty good. I'm not really familiar with DBZ, so I don't think I could say much, but I think all the character stuff was great, and them interacting with Gamma was great. GMK felt like a credible threat, like dangerous. Oh yeah, all in all, in all really good match. I just can't say much because, again, I don't really know DBZ. Alright. Which makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. That's an, that's an interesting, like, issue with the KWC is like with the KWC everyone who reads it is in like the same fan base and like it's Godzilla right right and like the ones that aren't Godzilla there's generally like massive overlap like most Godzilla fans are also Gamera fans Ultraman mm -hmm. yeah. so maybe maybe building into Monster Hunter if, we get, if we're lucky so and even then like with stuff that Godzilla fans aren't too familiar with it's very like Basic combatants and only a tiny few. Right. It. it, it well, I mean, yeah. any of the crossover e elements have been pretty uh, tame, more or less. It's like it's not hard to comprehend. You know, characters from this movie here. They're just still human characters in a story, sort of thing. Yeah. Well, with KWCE, you can pretty much have anything. So, like, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people who read K. BCE and aren't Dragon Ball fans, so they're going to be lost when they come into this. Especially because this is a match that just sort of drops you into it and expects you to just know what the characters are, which is yeah. totally fine. Yeah, I did see a few comments that were kind of sharing my same sentiments. It's like it's fine to just drop someone in and be like, if you know them, you're going to know what's happening. Because like, not every match needs to be like, okay, I'm going to sit you down and explain the world real quick. Yeah, because that can easily slow it down. I think it's just a matter of, like, with something like this, when you're going into a more, I don't want to say obscure, because it's Dragon Ball Z, the most popular anime ever. <laughs> but, like, something that not everyone is going to be a fan of, like, you have to make sure that, like, you're explaining enough without slowing the story down. Yeah. Which I think, uh, it, it is kind of hard for me to say, like, if it does so well enough here, because... I am a DBZ fan, so I know everything that's happening. But I think the match is still easy enough to follow, even if you're not a DBZ fan. You'll just be lost in, like, a few certain things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry for the sidetrack, Alex. Keep going. Oh, no, I was basically done. Yeah. Okay. Uh... So, yeah, I know. For my thoughts of the match, Gamma Spear Bump for the win! <laughs> that was awesome! Oh my gosh, that was good. That was. Yeah, no, I think, what, again, as a DBZ, as a, you know, Dragon Ball fan, I am more familiar. Like, you know, I was able to. Everything made sense. Even the pacing of this whole thing really did rub off, like, a uh, DBZ movie where it's just like. If you know the characters or don't know the characters, it doesn't matter. We're moving on! <laughs> Uh, but them being able to 
Like, I like the way the Z fight, Z warriors were able to partake in the fight well without, like, you know, necessarily taking away from the main, like, I mean, I guess they were sort of the focus in a sense, but the Gauss provided great, uh, great cannon fodder for the Z fighters to fight while Gamma tried to deal with the whole Godzilla thing. That was really nice. It was a good way to keep, like, you know, a lot of action going, you know, emphasis on the dragon, like, the dragon world and just the characters therein. Even if not everyone's given, like, sparse time, it's still like, you know, hell yeah, Yamcha, hell yeah, the Kienzon actually cuts through shit. <laughs> I was like, oh, thank gosh, it's not useless here. <laughs> uh, but for it, uh, yeah, no, I, and I'm also really happy with the, like, the time period the match is set in. It's like a post-Turlis so it's like, oh yeah, no, that makes sense, because that drained up a lot of Earth energy, you know, led to the awakening of the Gauss. And then, yeah, no, they tie, the way the monsters are tied to the dragon world was legitimately interesting, and I did not see coming. It was like, yeah, no, it's like, you get the loose implication that, like, Gamma and Gauss were sort of like their original counterparts just set in the Z world. Godzilla, I did not... Yeah, no, him being more or less the spirits of King Piccolo's, like, victims was one I did not see coming, but makes perfect sense. That, yeah, that, wow, no, that was a legitimately good twist and a great way of getting Godzilla in there without it being, like, you know, forced or, like, you know, kind of haphazard. That was a, a really interesting... That was a really interesting spin to the character that I was just not expecting at all. So, you know, kudos to Harley for that, because that, that was a good twist. That was a really good twist. Uh, and then, yeah, free it, uh, and then, yeah, Gohan getting involved with the Great Ape is a... That, I think the moment Gohan turned Great Ape was the moment where I got, like, a lot more excited for the fight. Like, you know, everything before was definitely solid, but I think, like, there was that kid in me that was like, yes, 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 yes! <laughs> so, I was so happy to see, like, you know, Uzaru, Uzaru Gohan throw hands with Godzilla. That was a hell yeah moment. I, it's like, it was something I did not realize I wanted until I got it, sort of thing. So, I, I'd say my own, like... I did have a couple, of, uh, like, one mild criticism I had is that Gamera's in our, like, you know, sort of, like, he did a lot of a shoving Godzilla, so that way Godzilla misses his attack thing. Did a lot of that, and I was like, that was a little too repetitive. Also, great use of baby Gamera. <laughs> it was so weird to have him talk, but it was like, oh yeah, no, that's a thing in the series where Master Roshi rides around on a small camera. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, no, that, that's great, that was great, so I was like... That was good stuff. Yeah, no, that was... Ah, uh, good. And again, Gamera Spirit Bomb. It makes so much sense. It... Oh, man, I'm so happy thinking about it. Oh, that was good. That... Ah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Everything about that was right. <laughs> oh, good grief. Oh, man. Yeah, no, this was a real... Yeah, no, the more... It's weird, because the first time I read it, it was sort of like... I wouldn't want to say it's lukewarm. I don't want it to come off as harsh, but it was like... Aside from the excitement of Gamma Spirit Bomb and then, you know, Gohan Uzaru, it was like... I was a little indifferent to it at first, but the more I think... The more I replay the match back in my head, the more excited I get. It, it, it's literally the same effect I had with uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, where... I came out of the movie theaters, it's like, eh, that was alright. And then I replayed it in my head a bunch of times and got super excited for it. Or, the trailer! Godzilla vs. Kong trailer, that's what it was. It... Okay, yeah, I was about to say, like, what are you talking about? You were losing your mind when you first saw right, it, right. the movie. Yeah, no, yeah, no the trailer. That, I had, that was my reaction to the trailer of GPK, where it was like, that was fine. And then the more I thought on it, it was like, oh my gosh, I'm excited again! That's what this game means. I think that's a very... I think that's a very good positive sign when it's like my first reaction isn't immediate uh, like praise, but upon reflecting on it, it's like, I really like this. There's, there's a lot more thought in uh, aspects put in here than I thought. I think some of the descriptions could have been more poignant, more fleshed out, but at the same time, you don't want to derail. You don't want to derail from what, what people are coming here for. Z warriors fighting Gauss and giant monsters wrecking it and throwing hands in the, in the dragon world. So it's like you know what, 
you definitely got that here. So, super happy with it. Uh, yeah, more happy. Yeah, surprisingly more happy with this now than when I made that post. Surprisingly. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no. Great stuff, Harley. Great job with the match. Uh, ah, good stuff. Good stuff. Whoa. Uh, who just appeared? Oh, showed it. Go. Rip. Uh, Nagoto, what'd you think of the match? Forgot I was muted. Uh, this was still. Did you guys hear the baby chick when I speak? Yes. 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 Oh. It's alright, uh, the baby chick can give their opinions too. Alright, so the the match was pretty fun. Uh, I like like how everyone else was pointing out Gamera throwing a spirit bomb. That was great. Plus, I like how like they go into like Tree of Might, how that affected the planet and stuff too. Overall, it was a really fun match. And as you can hear, the baby chick apparently likes it too. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it synced with you. Like, straight up, it won't talk unless you talk. And it's at the exact same time. Oh, I think it's, uh... I have noise suppression on. Yeah. It only picks oh. up my voice, oh, okay. like, everything around when I talk. Yeah. Uh, that would <laughs> Damn it, now it's not as funny. <laughs> <laughs> Is it my turn, or is he? Oh yeah, it's your turn. Oh yeah, sure. You're also quiet. Did you switch devices? You switched, yeah. didn't you? My my computer shit itself. Ah, uh, okay, okay. All right. Yeah, it, it decided to uh, in the mid sentence of you talking about the KWCE, it cut you out, and I was like, "What just happened?" And no one responded, so I realized my computer was being a shit. Okay. Damn. Uh, uh, I gotta say, this is what the KWCE was made for. I love that the lore is so greatly integrated, it makes sense for the story, and uh, I love that we actually got a BBZ match, and I love how uh, the characters were portrayed. I loved that moment of Goku when he goes Kaioken times four. The Gamma Spirit Bomb is the hypest shit, and if anyone says otherwise, they are wrong. That was so fucking rad. Uh, uh, well, th I, actually, I did awesome. want to say, I didn't think it was that rad. <laughs> I will punch you in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I will say. Uh, I, I've not read the match, but it does sound really hype. The way it's done too is really nice. It reminded me of uh, Goku handing the spirit bomb to Krillin in the Saiyan Saga. Um, overall, I really love this match. I liked for like a second Gohan had somewhat control of the Ozaru, if I'm remembering right. Because for the most part he's just berserk and then at one point he, he's responding to Goku. Uh... I really liked that the techniques weren't called like their translation uh, translations. If I remember correctly, they don't call like the Kians on the Destructo Disc. I could be wrong. Oh, yeah. I think I the only one that goes by actual... I, there are only like a handful that go by their English names, but the others are all Japanese, which is a great touch. So, yeah, it, it's a really nice touch. Um, the fight itself was really good. I love the baby gamer reference, and I, oh, I like how uh, Gamera's technically last appearance if we bring up uh, baby Gamera is in Dragon Ball Super, and not since Brave. Damn. It's funny to think about. Mega damn. Um, yeah, for real, rip Gamera, please, Raid Raw Gamera, work out for the love of God. Um, overall, I really did enjoy this match. I, this is the kind of crossover that the KWCE was made for. So, hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, yeah, I, I, it's nice to see, again, it is nice just to see 
that level of effort put in of like, yeah, I know Godzilla and Gamera and Dragon Ball. It's like, how does this work? And I, I think this one works really well. Plus, generally, Heisei, Gamera, and GMK Godzilla sort of sync up real nicely anyway, so that helps. Uh, but yeah, freaking... Yeah, no, great, impl great, like, way to segue all the characters in here. All in a very believable fashion, because again, I do like the fact this is a pre, you know, heck, I think even, like, pre-Saiyan Saga, technically? No. Oh, no. It's between, uh, Trey and Might is in between when they beat that's, Vegeta. That's right, that's right. And if Turles was a Saiyan. When they go to Namek. That's right. Okay, so yeah, no, between Vegeta and uh, Namek. That's right, that's right. Yeah, Tree of, Might, Tree of Might is a movie where it's like, it can't fit into the series. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> too much nonsense. It was like, Goku's a l It was like, oh my gosh. Well, the fact is, Piccolo and all the side characters are alive, but they're, they're dead. They should yeah. That's right, that that's point. right. Well, he has... But he has abilities that he used against Vegeta, so... Yeah, yeah no, you're totally no right. That one makes no sense, like, when trying to fit it into the canon. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's why I... That's one of those movies where it's, like, I sort of view it as, like, an AU, almost. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like, AU where Goku managed to get there before anyone died. Yeah, or they held out long enough in, until Goku got there. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, no, I getcha. I getcha. Free... <laughs> Uh, I completely forget how nonsensical the, those friggin' movies can be. That's why it's a good thing it's a continuation of the movie and not the friggin' uh, yeah, <laughs> not the friggin' series. Because oh boy, that'd be a nightmare in of itself. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> surprised we haven't just gotten a straight up Hase Gamma versus GMK Godzilla match. Uh, not yet, but th this one's a close contender. This one's a pretty close contender. Yeah, I was gonna say like this, this does it well enough. But just like yeah, I'm surprised we haven't gotten like just a straight up those two fighting each other because yeah. i feel like that is like the perfect godzilla versus gamma almost mm -hmm. oh yeah for obvious reasons i mean they're both kaneko they both share berries they both feel like they're from the same world almost <laughs> i'll do you one better godzilla 2001 versus hasty gamma versus ultraman max bro did Kaneko work on that? He didn't. He did uh, the first episode where Gamera and Godzilla clashed his toys. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Neat. So, yeah. Something to keep in mind. <laughs> you hear that, Internet? <laughs> uh, Someone write it now. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. You always want to write Kino. <laughs> no, I said someone write oh, it. Someone write it. Uh, I thought you said I'm going to write it. <laughs> No, dude, I have too many. I, I have too many matches I need to I write. Know. <laughs> yeah, GVR is like me, where we where we have just thousands of ideas and we only get the thirty percent of them. Yep. If even that. Damn. Yep. But yeah, we all get infected with that. <laughs> like whenever I have a new idea for a match, where it's like I gotta write this. I need. I feel like go through the list I've made up and just like, okay, which of these am I not gonna do? Mm -hmm. Yep. No, I know I've hey. done that. So. We all get the urge to make something and then make more things and it just keeps going on and on. That becomes overwhelming yep. and then it's like, oh no, oh no. What have I done? <laughs> I now have to pay alimony. <laughs> it's just the worst. <laughs> anyway. Uh. But yeah, um... Uh... With that said, though, uh, do we have any other thoughts for match 67, or do you, are we good? We're good. All right. Uh, but yeah, with that said, uh, yeah, no, I think that's, I mean, that's it for the KDWCE-related stuff, and I don't think we really need to, like, I really don't think we need to go, like, above and beyond or anything. I think we're pretty much content to where we are and probably call it a close here, so... <clears throat> Oh, you can talk about, like, the adjustment to the roster. Oh, my gosh. I forgot about that. Oh, of course I forgot about that. So, uh, I had mentioned Nerd. I had mentioned that match 329 was somewhat of an influence. And, yeah, no. the We adjusted the roster stats so that way monsters with differing heights can be 
like reinterpreted as like you know you could have them be smaller you can have them be bigger or if you need to know a size a range of like how big can i make this guy how small can i make this guy you have your answer uh some of them we didn't uh give a defined uh like limit to just because some of it's just like you know microscope to 200 meters or whatever it's just like eh we'll just let it we'll let those ones placate more to the proper like we'll just let those play naturally like to the proper uh, audience if you will or or, uh, uh, writer whatever for it uh point being that's like it's not something we're gonna make a yeah, no, some of them aren't too defined. It's like, hey, you can make it almost as big as you want or as small as you want. Then others are like, like the uh, AOT Titans are rigid. Like, you can only have a full body 12 meter Titan or a full body 80 meter Titan for the case of like attack and armor Titans. Uh, or, you know, again, like Colossal Titan, you couldn't just make them 15 meters and be like, oh, yeah, here we go. It's like, no, as a full body, the smallest he can be is 55 meters. Because these are this is all information derived from the novelization, which is technically tied. Oh, the doors open. Right, which is tech. Oh, sorry, I forgot my mic was. Oh, damn. But, no, uh, like you know, which is technically tied to the movie version. So that's what kind of what we base those assessments on. Uh, weight, though, we're custom made. Just did a tiny bit of research and then a tiny bit of uh, modifications from there. Uh... <clears throat> The Attack Titan at his smallest is officially like the lightest character in the KWC. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's, pre- he's pretty much there. Mm-hmm. Like the small... 13 tons? 13 tons. Well, even like the... Well, even the smallest Gauss is... Oh, yeah, that's right. Like 40 tons or something like that, right? 20, 20 tons. 20 tons. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, the smallest skull color is 40 that's tons. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> Got those two mixed up. But for you to... It's a, as as as, lo- as far as ones that have rigid defined stats go, yeah. Attack Titan's smallest form is the lightest character. When are we getting a baby Gauss versus a baby Skull? <laughs> yeah, one day. I will write it. Don't don't tempt me. Yeah, no, because it's like I think what was also important to this has always been sort of like we and staff knew about it, but I don't think that had ever been, uh, I don't think it's ever been properly conveyed in a match that's like, hey, you can have differing size monsters depending on the circumstances. Uh, I, I even think, like, uh, Godzilla Source versus King Ghidorah Heisei kind of took that one step further by literally having a smaller King Ghidorah, if I remember that one right. Yeah, he, he was just like, it had like half size Heisei Ghidorah. Yeah, or, or Godzilla Source versus Zilla 2 was another one that was like, you know, literally, I think the Zilla yeah. in that one was super small. I do think that doing that, though, does come with, with its own risks because, like, King Ghidorah Heisei was that, that match was not well liked. Hmm. In, in regards to, like, in regards to shrinking the character, right. like, that seemed I, strange. That, it is strange in the context of this is not known within the character. Whereas if you wrote Hasty Godzilla as an 80 meter Godzilla, it's like, oh, that makes sense. You know, it's like, I think, I think it's like, you know, it's only strange when there's no official precedent for it. And I think that was the case with Hasty Ghidorah having no real official precedent of a smaller King Ghidorah. I don't, don't get me wrong. I could see some of the logic to it, but it's still, you know, a little weird. Uh, you know what I find funny? But- you left Junior at 77 meters, so we have a 80 meter Heisei with a 77 meter Junior. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, 80 meters is pretty like it's pretty much an average number in a lot of ways, but it's like yeah, that... and like one of them is just more adult looking than the other. Oh yeah, no. The best part is that Junior will only be like a head shorter than Godzilla in that point. <laughs> yeah. But he think I'll be <laughs> twice as weight. Right? <laughs> totally. Uh... Thus sprouting a full back of dorsal spines. Oh, lordy. But yeah, no, I felt like it was... Look, some teenagers are like as tall as adults, but they're still lanky. You mean like bacon? Yeah. I'm six foot. Fuck you. <laughs> exactly. Uh... Damn. But yeah, no, it's like, I felt like it was important to at least, to at least the monsters that were like, you know, we already covered all the options that I felt like they were like, okay, you know, there's this one, this one, this one, this one. Uh, 
uh, I felt like it was important to stress that it's like here's the smallest and tallest we could have monsters be, especially with Legendary Kong, who we've seen. It's like you know he's grown over the course of his appearances. So it's like okay, I think it would be nice to have a rigid like how small he can be versus how tall he can be, uh, and then finally just get that settled once and for all. I think our only caveat, only real caveat, and I think this only kind of applies to Heisei Godzilla is the sort of like. We would rather avoid something like a 90 meter Godzilla, just kind of keep it to like, you know, he's either 80 meters pre nuke or 100 meters post nuke or whatever. Uh, I think he's the only real, because the rest of them have more natural growth. Like, okay, you know, Legendary got, grows over the five years. Like, you know, he could be like 115 meters in between 2014 to 2019 kind of thing. Or, you know, or, or Kong. I think Legendary Kong's the perfect example because. We see in his in the MonsterVerse, he has gone from 100 feet to 200 feet to 300 feet to uh, 102 meters. So it's like, yeah, you could, it's fine to have Kong range anywhere from what we have established as 87 meters as the stand-in for Skull Island. And then, you know, like, you know, anything in between that and 102 meters. Like, he could be any of those sizes and we'd be okay with that because it's seen in the monsterverse so that is fine uh so but yeah no, it's like it's yeah, i'm basically just trying to ask try to keep it true to source don't take it too crazy uh just yeah just just, just keep it true to the source that's all i ask If you write Hey Say Guzzle is 81 meters tall, Kaijuex will personally shoot. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, um. Uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah, that aside, I hope you guys really enjoyed that. Like, again, I know it's sort of, uh. I just think it was important to keep that noted. So it's like, okay, there it is. It is done. Hooray! <laughs> So, anyway, uh, and I think that's roughly about it as far as that goes. So, uh, but yeah, with that said, this has been this month's KDBCC, and we will see you guys next month for the next proper KDBCC. Uh, yeah, no. These things are proper? Well, I mean, la the last video was go basically Godzilla vs. Kong, the review. So this is a proper one. <laughs> Gosh, Jack. Anyway, see you guys. Your mom's a proper no, one. Got him. No, em. yours. Not really, but whatever. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, see you guys later. See ya. See ya. Bye. Dude. Later. Damn.